we be without our A, B, C? That's why we stand here so proud. It's not for sale, it was built to last. That's why we need to say it loud. I have it on classic FM nearly all the time. <laughs> And if, and if it gets a bit too modern for me, I change over. To, I change over to news radio and catch up on what's really making me aggro in the world. <laughs> but otherwise, yes. Anyway, hello. It's nice to be back in Rosewood, which is where I used to live until we moved to the Southern Highlands, back just down the hill from here. And the Rosewood Club was where we spent quite a, a few evenings of our lives in the seven years that we lived here. Yeah, why friends friends matters is it's inspirational listening to people like Janine. And I'd like to particularly commend this branch. Uh, it's awkward picking out individual names because you end up leaving people out. But there are, these are the people that I know about. Um, I'm looking at Diana now. She's one that I've worked with for ooh, how long? Ten about years. Of, yeah, it'd be about ten years because she and I swapped roles. Well, not swapped roles. She took over as assistant editor, doing a far better job than I ever did. Yeah. And now, uh, well, you do a superb job compiling all these articles for update. They are brilliant. And I can't say enough about those, Diane. Um, Janine, of course. But the first person I knew in the northern suburbs branch before the branch existed, she's lurking in the back there, Margaret Kitson. And I'd like to pay a particular tribute to Margaret because I found her two years after I started being MEMSEC, working on an access database in those days. And it was, I will say it's computer based, but it was pretty, you know, fairly manual in those days. Uh, and probably about 2009, I think, that I first met you and I asked if you would help with all, and you're still doing it to this day, all the mail outs that go out, go out under Margaret's careful watch. You can say that in one sentence, but it's quite a lot of time and effort that she has done diligent, diligently for ABC Friends. And it's that solid support that the Friends gives to our organisation, one, and therefore, by, de by default, to the ABC, that really matters. So, big hats off to Margaret. Jenny Foster, for, I look out for her pithy letters in the SMH all the time. <laughs> Lindsay, who took over from Janine when she was politically orientated. <laughs> uh, um, fabulous work. But the, the first person that started this whole gig off for the whole of New South Wales, Corinne, with her husband Bassie, and 1976. So we go back a long way, that's 40 something years, I can't do the sums, you can all do that. And Corinne's been a a solid stalwart of ABC Friends, or Friends of the ABC as it was then known, for all this time and is still doing things to this day with the, the latest music blast. So look, I know I'm skipping a few people out and I know, you know, meeting you, um, Bev and John, for the um, protest down in Canberra. So I just want to pay a real tribute to this branch for being very active and just fantastic. I've got no chance in the time that I've got available to talk about all the various people that I've got to know around national. Um, we didn't exist as national, in, as you would know, until the end of 2016. Um, but as a consequence of that, we've got to know, all got to know each other, sure, by Zoom, and that's great. Sometimes face-to-face, -face, it's even better. And phenomenal people have done a lot of work. Um, something that I can say today that's new as of this week, and that is something I'm really thrilled to hear about, that Victoria has finally joined our national database. Oh. Yay! <laughs> so we are truly a national organisation in every sense of the word now. And there's been a lot of behind the scenes um, discussions going on. And I'm absolutely thrilled that, that Michael Henry and all his team, are all, we're all, we're all one, one big happy family now. And, and that really speaks volumes for our organisation, I believe. Um, so I'm thrilled, absolutely thrilled about that. And then, of course, after we formed into a national organisation in 2016, 2017 uh, was when the ABC alumni was formed because of all the ghastly cuts to the ABC and all the in intrusion into the board. And that has empowered us too because, as you know, as Jenny mentioned, there's Helen Graswell's speech up at Central Coast. We are fully interactive with the, with the alumni now and they're in a sense part and parcel of our organisation as much as we are with them, but they've got the famous names that everybody can relate to. <coughs> so that's really special. My background in uh, New South uh, with um, ABC Friends uh, goes back to 
goes back to 1996 when we were living in Jakarta and I couldn't go home to Brisbane at the time because our house was rented out so we, we went home to uh, New Zealand to see all the, um, the family and stay with them and David joined us later, he was working only get three weeks off. And we stopped off in Sydney and where do you go when you stop off in Sydney? You can't now but you could then. It was the QVB and upstairs to the ABC shop and I could leave my children sitting on the floor reading all the books there. <laughs> and then bought them, you know, I didn't do the wrong thing then. But dashed around and did all my, used the ABC shop as a babysitter and then on the checkout and paying for everything, there was the form to join ABC, Friends of the ABC in New South Wales. So I did. That was 96. And in 2007 when we were living back in Sydney again, down the hill as I say in Roseville, uh, ended up um, uh, in the Update magazine, Chris Cartledge advertised my, the membership secretary role, so I took that on. And he trained me and he was really diligent, fantastic, what a great guy. And he's, he was down the Illawarra. Um, and then, so I did that for several years and then handed over to Gail Davies. And then Gail and I swapped, you all know Gail I think, and Gail and I swapped and she did mem sec and I did secretary. And it was, I think, about the time that I became the secretary and I was writing the odd article for Update as well at the time because I'd become proofreader and all that sort of thing. I really started to get to know some of our members quite well. And I realised the significance of just what Janine's been saying prior to this, um, the importance of us being out there and talking to the, we're the coalface. In the branches, we're at the coalface. We talk to the new people. Within the organisation, we're talking at the, the, the esoteric levels, you know, the ABC, to, you know, chatting with David Anderson or whatever, whoever it might be. But we're the ones that are out there talking to strangers or acquaintances and persuading, you know, every conversation I had would be of the, oh, you know, just watching something the other night, oh, must have been on the ABC, because I only watch ABC and SBS, and I'm deliberately, it's always deliberately brought into the conversation somehow, always. And you probably all do the same thing. And that gets its own energy. It's fantastic. So that's that's something I do. And also at the time of the secretary time was when Janine put her head above the parapet and intimated that she thought we should, probably should have a branch. And I thought, yes, because I wanted one in the Southern Highland and didn't have the time and the energy to do it. So when she put her hand above the well, that was it. The Doherty Centre was booked by Diana and Jason Lowe was involved and Janine got in and we got the act together and it was a bit of a, from my perspective as Secretary New South Wales, it was a bit of a shambles but I kept trying. I sent out the email blasts and we were going okay and we, anyway, we pulled it all together and Janine did the advertising and Diana did a host of work, I can't remember what you did, but I know it was an awful lot, <laughs> <laughs> and going too, I think. So, um, starting that, we, we the, book, the room that was booked was cleverly chosen to be suitable for about 60 people, maybe, said. And it was a, a weekend, and most of you were probably there. It was the long weekend, there was a footy final on, don't ask me what, because I'm not interested, but anyway. So we didn't think we'd get very many people. And the room filled, and we ended up with exactly 100 people. I was so impressed. <laughs> and despite being upstairs, but we didn't know. No, we stairs and everything, exactly right. But then we had the great, the great guest speaker of Jonathan Holmes, if you recall. Mm. And I'm, to this day, I still remember his question to us all. Who of you still watches live TV? And every hand in the room went up, and he was floored by that. So there's an awful lot of us, that I still do. I can't be bothered, I'll catch up on I do if I really need to, but mostly I can't let that one go through to the keeper. Um, anyway, so that I still remember that question and then his reaction to us all saying we all watch live. So from that, and uh, then a lady in Southern Highlands put a hand up and wanted to start the Southern Highlands branch, and it was also Western suburbs wanted to get started. I developed a bit of a process, uh, you know, talking about uh, venue, advertising, posters, flyers, agenda for the meeting and all that sort of, the, the sorts of things you do as a secretary. So well let's start finish it and finally send it off to Bruce Stevenson for next week's um, thing that he's having the week after whenever it is. In September he's having that um, branches assistance program, it's a Zoom I think. So I did all of that which was ju just great. I finally got my act together and, and, um, and did a process for starting new branches. So while I was secretary, I helped, helped with the founding of five branches. And 
I'm actually really chuffed about that because as I say, I really believe the branches are at the cold base, the, the people that are represented here in this room are so true all across, across the country. And the more active we are, the more effective we are. I helped with the other thing too, and that makes friends matter, is the platform that Chris Cartledge um, evaluated, there were three or four, he looked well, two or three, I think he evaluated, and our, social, our, social, our uh, software platform, as you may know, is Nation Builder. And uh, he took a long time evaluating that with a couple of other people. But that's given us a, a very current and very optimal, I should say very, an optimal platform for um, the benefit of our promotions and our, who we are and what we're on about. So, and I spent, I think it was close on five months of my life reviewing that uh, after post-implementation review, which was quite a um, challenge. It was hours and hours and weeks and of effort to, to be sure that we had having in, instituted it. And that was partly as a means to encourage our um, southern state people to join us as they now have, which is fantastic. So I was really thrilled to do that. Um, the other thing that we did, of course, was the protest down in Canberra that Janine and our branch joined together with, and also, of course, the Canberra branch, um, well, the ACT branch, I should probably say. Uh, and it was small, but it was effective. You know, I, I think it was well worth us doing that, and I'm so glad that it was initiated at the, at by the Northern Suburbs branch. The other thing it did not long after um, the post-implementation review of Nation Builder was Margaret Reynolds, when she was now then president, uh, wondered if I was able to go to the, the local government association conference in Canberra, so I did. One of our key people, and the purpose of that was to do with transmission of the ABC, and for that matter, SBS, especially in television. Um, and that's about the cost of transmission. Some of you may have been on the Zoom, that I think was run by the ABC alumni, and David Anderson was the guest. Did some of you hear, hear and see that one? It's about two years ago, I think, 2021, I think, and I heard from being the secretary at the time, I might have been 20 now, I think, back, back, back about it. Um, somebody, uh, somebody had heard about ABC Friends who lives in Goulburn, that's only 40 minutes south of where I live, and they contacted us, therefore me, quite by chance I was the one that got that, and, and they said, we don't have any television, um, and 500 and odd houses on the eastern side of Goulburn don't have any television with ABC or SBS, and we haven't had for the last two months. Okay, yeah. so anyway, I pursued it as, as best I could, asked questions and contacted some of the friends down there and found out the details. And it's just because friends exist, there was something able to happen. So, people of the Eastern Goulburn area had approached their council and said, why aren't the transmission towers working? And I don't know about you, but until then, I hadn't particularly realised it's quite a complex process, all the transmission around the country. And it comes in many and varied forms. And obviously, digitisation is a whole new, new other discussion. But this was analogue, or whatever you call it, but anyway, not digital. And the, the, they didn't have the transmission. Um, and they wanted it, so I followed up with that and I was able to get people in touch with each other and, and I can't remember exactly what, oh I know, that's right, it's Helen. I thought the, the alumni existed, so I, I think I rang Helen to ask, to ask her what would be best. She said, can you write that all out? out? And I did in careful dot point form, in chronological order. Sent it off to her and she said, you mind if I forward that on to David Anderson? I said, oh, that'd be great. So she did. And within two weeks, they were back on the air. So I'm just saying, because we existed, there was a venue, an avenue for people to get through. So it was just a little thing. I accidentally was the one in the loop. I'm really pleased. And I'm back on the air. But that's what I was saying about the Zoom with David Anderson. I asked him, you were able to send a question in in advance. And I asked him especially um, in advance, how did the pay, how did that get paid for? Did the ABC do it and how did it get paid for? Because as I say, there are many and varied ways that the transmissions occur around the, the country and some of it's paid for by the local government, which is why I was saying it's the LGA conference. And he said, yes, we did. And their budget is 1.1 billion or whatever, it doesn't matter the exact number, but a significant proportion of that 
comes out first from the Department of Comms to pay for transmission. So if there's any repairs that have to be done, that would go, you'd think the contract that got all that money, or contract doors around the country, would be doing it. But no, they've already been paid. So if the ABC had to dig into its, and that's the question I asked Anderson, the ABC had to dig into its budget, operating budget, to pay for the repairs. So that means it can't do, you know, half a program somewhere. You, do you know what I mean? It, it, that's the sad bit about that. But equally, they got back on the air, but I was really, so I went to the LGA conference and handed out what Sue Pinnock in um, South Australia used to be the president there. And she knows a chap from, I think, WA, who's quite a smart chappy, and I can't go into the details because I don't understand it. It's like <laughs> reading Fermat's last theorem. It's completely out of my head. But anyway, transmission capabilities and talked about there is a way. And so I wanted to, we printed out those eight to 10 pages and I handed it out to all the councils that I managed to converse with who pay for, currently provide the transmission capability. So this is the sort of thing that we, we have a possibility to influence as ABC Friends as we come across this, this news and information. So that's that was something else. Um, and lastly, um, what was I saying? Yeah, and, and as an update production manager, I've had the great good fortune to, to get to know a lot more of our people. I've written the stories for update. It's not, Diana would prefer this was purely an academic <laughs> paper. No, no, well, that's the impression I had. I'm, I'm, my apologies. But anyway, um, I, I, Mel has always liked the occasional story, so I've, I've always enjoyed meeting some of our amazing friends over the years and just featuring them. One of the ones that I did was for Jackie uh, Deacon up on, on the Gold Coast because I met her on the way back down from a Zonta conference in Brisbane. And uh, she sends out all our news items which uh, um, to everyone, for those that want to be on her circulation list. And what a fascinating woman she is. She's across everything. So we've got this mass of fantastic people with all different skill sets and we exist to be that wonderful support for the ABC, to fight for the ABC. And we've got access to great sources of information now in the body of the ABC friends. We've got good, I sort of, sort of say corporate knowledge, that's not quite right, but across, across our own planet, we've got all that. We've got, um, we stand on the shoulders like the Corin Fairburn Bass that, that has, been doing the, you know, like the, the big march over the Harbour Bridge back in, was it 96? I think it was, wasn't it? it was, we were away, I, I, I just know of it. And how many thousand people marched over the Harbour Bridge for the huge? Yeah, it was, was it 20,000? I think so. It was a huge number. I remember John Hewson telling me he was one of them. I just remember that. But anyway, I, I wasn't in the country, but I know it was a huge number. So we've got that. We've got good, we're getting good credibility now. We had it, but we've got it better now because we've got close association with the alumni as well, we've got the benefit of, um, to use it, almost use the expression you use, but not quite nearly the same, collective action. Because we're not one off, you know, it's not just you going out in the street and talking to someone, you speak with authority because you're part of ABC Friends. You know, it, it, we've got that authority now. We are contacted to ask questions. So that, I think that's a really powerful thing. It's little, but it's powerful and it's happening a lot. Um, we're, yeah, and our members, we're in, implicitly part of this big group and we've got that extra power, so I think it's fantastic. And I'd like to adjure everybody to do what I'm hoping over to do, and that's the Churchill, famous Churchill expression, never give up on our ABC. Democracy depends on our ABC, and I really think that what we're doing is terribly important, and you all know that. I don't need to. I'm preaching to the converted. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you.